And tonight we have another person who has been doing this a long time, a very experienced lead, Robert Tinning. All Hello. right, Robert. Can we give him Mr. Microphone? Yeah. Okay. There you go. Thank you, sir. You had to do the tapping thing? I did. Okay. Just, hey. Uh, so all of the stuff on this slide is just boring career stuff. What I want to really emphasize is what this means is it took me 35 years of thinking, work my tail off, um, I'll get promoted. And I did. I was running large management companies of like 26,000 units. But at some point, I thought I was going to get uh, made a partner, like a law firm. And it only took me about 32 years, 32 years, to realize that's not how multifamily property management works. So you could say I'm a slow learner. Um, <laughs> but I finally joined Lifestyles. And what I'm excited to say is that they say you can retire within five years. I got to retire from a high paying corporate job within three years. Give a hand. More exciting to me though than that is that the deal, we sold two deals three weeks ago. Three of our investors told me that they, because of the proceeds from that sale, have retired from W-2 incomes. Another investor said their wife let them buy a new Ford 250 pickup. So <laughs> that makes me almost as excited as the being able to retire You're myself. in Texas, that's why. It's having three people, though, being able to also retire. So David talked about giving back. I mean, I feel like I'm now being able to help other people start that journey as well. Um, and do you remember, because, you know, when I teach a seminar, I teach people from all walks of life. Here's a guy coming to my seminar who has way more knowledge than me in the industry. He's been in the industry 30 years. What was your biggest takeaway for, there are other people watching that are in the industry 20, 30 years, they think, well, I know real estate, why would I need lifestyles? Could you just give a, a, a brief reason, your reasoning why, and how you thought about that? So I finally woke up and realized maxing out my 401k um, and all of that wasn't could actually get, gonna get me there. And there's a guy that's been in lifestyles for, I don't know, 15 years, John Ridgeway, good mm -hmm. friend of mine. We grew up in the industry together, um, worked for big companies, they sell your portfolio, Suddenly you're out of a job for five months, burn down your savings, find another job, and you're just on this little roller coaster or hamster in the hamster wheel. Mm -hmm. um, he kept saying for probably 10 years, you need to really look at lifestyles. You need to join it. And I'm like, sounds like multifamily. More. I'm not interested. I've got the big corner office. I'm, you know, all my pride. I mean, look at me. I'm something. I'm, I'm whatever. Yeah, I was, I'll tell you what I was. I was making other people a lot of money is what I was. So John was, kept trying to get me to go and we were actually at a golf tournament and he goes Robert so what are you going to retire on and I went that's like the stupidest question I've ever been asked I'm going to live off the home my home equity my 401k my savings and he goes without missing a beat he goes so you're hoping that you die before you run out of money and I went what he goes yeah you're actually hoping you have enough money that you won't you know you won't outlive the money you've saved I went well I never really thought of it like that and he said I'm never going to touch any of that stuff I'm going to live off of this thing called passive income. Well, keep in mind, he tried for like 10 years to get me to listen. That was finally the hook where I went, wait, what's passive income? So I came to this seminar. I went to the two-day. And I'll be honest, I was like, this still sounds too good to be true. So it took me about another month and a half to finally join. And it's been just success ever since. And now he retired himself. See that? So it's kind of cool seeing somebody who who knows all that, skeptical, but that's logical, very conservative fiscally, and now you made it happen. Right. But not just for you, but for other members as well, which I love. Uh, cool. So next slide, yeah. Yep. Um, Here, you want to do clickers? Do you want your own clicker? No. He's done. Oh. I'm not techie. <laughs> You're not techie? You can't press one button. Are you an Aggie? Okay. Give him the clicker. Oh, here's our, here's our Aggie, our resident Aggie. <laughs> right in the front row. There you go. All right. I'll, I can do this. Right arrow. All right. So <clears throat> I made a lot of other people, like I said, a lot of money. I had one portfolio where I increased the NOI 30% a year for three years in a row. And the CEO, chairman, owner of the company sent me this really, really nice letter about you're the only portfolio, the only region in our entire country, in the entire company that was profitable last year. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart, blah, blah, blah. I held on to this letter for like 20 years. It was like I was so proud of this. I'm like, look at me. I made him so much money once I finally realized, because I never teach you this stuff, about that 30% a year, what that was doing for him, how much money I was making for him, and I got a letter. So, <laughs> Not even a watch? No, not what? a watch. No. 
So that was kind of, you know, my ego. I loved the big corner office, like I said, and the, I was the guy that David talked about. Go to college, work hard, work your way up the ladder. Um, president of the Apartment Association of New Mexico, then of Tarrant County, then of Dallas, TAA Executive Committee, National Apartment Association Board of Directors for 20 years, helping a lot of other people, and I really enjoyed it, but I wasn't retiring myself. Right. So. Um, the property we're going to talk about tonight is the one that we just sold um, three weeks ago, four weeks ago. We bought it in night, or it was built in '86. We bought so, it. So, where where is this property for the people watching sure. and whatnot? It's in Arlington, Texas, um, and a really it's one of the strongest submarkets. Uh, DFW. It's like right if you if not from around here, it's from right near the airport. It's very centrally located. Sounds like a good area. Yeah. We got a really good deal on the deal, but it was funny because at the time we paid. Uh, the 108 a door I had people say you're paying over a hundred thousand dollars an apartment because at the time nothing had gone for that high well look at what we sold it for um, three years later but we because of lifestyles <clears throat> those sound like really big numbers right and that might scare you off and let me back up so I manage my own stuff because of my property management background I didn't want to jump into the 20 unit deal and have someone um, calling me at 3 in the morning, hey, my toilet stopped up, because then I still had to text the plumber. I didn't want to do that. So I wanted to buy, we bought 120 units on our first deal, 68 units on that deal, on the next deal. Because of the relationships I made through the Lifestyle Vendor Program, I had the broker then come to me and say, hey, would you be interested in the 250-unit deal next door to your 68-unit deal? Economies of scale and everything else made total sense. So bought this but it sounds like a lot of money that we had to raise but we always open up our investors or investments to like twenty five thousand dollar tranches um we've got a hundred thousand investors so so, bigger, so guys put really, really quick this scares new people ten million dollars how many people in the room have ten million dollars okay me and one other person but <laughs> my point is this guys you got to break down a smaller number so you had how many investors in this deal Probably about 137 in this So 137 country. different people, hardworking people, all walks of life. Some people are firefighters, police officers, whatever. Were they all here in Texas? No, they're all pretty much name a state, and they're from it. Hawaii, New York, Wisconsin, um, Florida, Texas, all over the country. So it doesn't matter where you live. Live where you want to live, but invest where it makes sense. It's, a, it's about return on investment. So he has 100-plus people there. And you said your lowest investment was what, 25 grand? Right. Now watch this. How many people in this room come with 25 grand? You could be a real estate investor in a 250 unit. You might own all the toilet seats, but you own part of it. <laughs> but it doesn't matter if you put in 25 grand, 50 grand, or 100 grand, because people put in different amounts of money. The rate of return is the rate of return. If you made 80% return, everybody made 80%. Everybody follow me on that? I just want to stand the new people at simple math. Now here's another thing. You have 120 some people in this deal. Did every one of them fly from California with their, you know, paper straws and they came here with their kale salads? Did they all come and look at the property with you? No, oh, maybe five people, six people. So five, five out of 120 people actually looked at it. The rest of them, all they wanted was their check in the mail. Does that make sense to everybody in the room? I want the new people to understand you don't have to be next to this property to be investing in this property. And one of the cool reasons that that happens is because Lifestyles is so protective of the passive investors. Um, that it is a room of like-minded individuals that you trust each other, you become friends with your investors, uh, you're talking to them, you're seeing them all the time. So people are, are confident about investing um, with a lead because they, they know, first of all, if that lead gets out of the wheelhouse too much, Lifestyles is gonna get them back in the wheelhouse and they're gonna take care of the passives. So that always is, I think, a really cool deal. So that, that's a big factor, guys. I, I know you're new to this tonight and you're watching for the first time, some of you. When he says protective, not only are lifestyles protective, but all these lead investors are protective. Do you, I mean, think about it. One of the coolest things we do, and this is a little bit inside baseball, but I'm going to share that with you tonight for the guests. Before we had this meeting, we had about 40 or 50 of these lead investors in the room over there all talking about their best practices. Now, they do this every month in each city. I'll have a group doing it right now in San Antonio. I have a group doing it in Dallas. I had a group doing it in Houston. Think of the level of success. As you have a guy here, 30 years experience, and there's a brand new guy right next to him, and they go, well, what do you do with low flow toilets? So, well, here's my vendor. Who likes that we do that? Now, you think about this. If you have an Exxon over here, and this guy has a Sunoco, do they open their books with each other? 
See, that's the difference of lifestyles. We all grow together. We're like a family. Who likes that? There you go. I just want you to understand that. So that's and a big it, part it of flips it. the other way too because okay. the, I learned at, at each one of those meetings every time of all the friends I've made that are other leads. I learned stuff from them constantly. Um, new guys was like, "Hey, I just found this the best new toilet, whatever," and I'm like, "Never heard of that before." So everybody is helping everybody. And I really admire that. You don't see a Ford guy sitting down to a GM guy and saying, what kind of Corvette are you going to build next year? So it's a really cool setup. Cool. All right, so this is kind of high level, but um, the biggest thing I want you to focus on is the very bottom line. Yep. Is that in a little over three years, we gave everyone back all of their money. So if they put in $50,000, they got their $50,000 back. But before that, before we sold it, they got distributions quarterly. So at the end of the day, and this number actually keeps going up because I keep remembering things like, oh, that's right, we're getting money back from the city of Arlington. Yeah, uh, yeah, water deposit, deposit for this or whatever. Right. Yeah, that's a common one, yeah. As today, I got two checks in the mail from a vendor like, hey, um, you over, or proration, so here's a check back. I'm like, okay. Um, but we gave everybody back all their money plus 145% on top of that. We'd be okay with that. Thank <laughs> yeah, you, so our initial... Yeah, you see how excited he got about that? I'll give my investors back 145%. <laughs> so our initial uh, distribution um, after the sale, if you put in $50,000, we sent out checks for $102,000 in three years. And that's... So think about that. That's your $50,000 back plus another $52,000. And we still have distributions, big distributions to make. So the model works. You just have to follow it. Um, I just love the fact, like I already said, that we have three of our investors who emailed me just saying that they now have retired from their W-2 job and they didn't think they were gonna be able to do that for like 10 years. So that got me excited. Yeah, and think about it, it you know, it's not just his deal doing this, there's all these deals of lifestyles. So you put 50K here, 50K here, 100K here, 25K here. Some of these people in this room are in 30, 40, 50 deals that all made 100% return. Would that be life-changing? You might have one at 60% return and one at 180, but our goal is to average out about 100% return every three years or so. Would, who would be okay with that? Would that be better than what you're doing your 401k, your IRA, your TSP, your 403b right now? W-2, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's a W-2? <laughs> That's okay. Robert can say that now. It's kind of cool. I can, and it's kind of cool not um, having paid taxes. A lot of this, they don't teach you in school, right? A lot of this still sounded all too good to be true. And I, even being in property management for 35 years, and I could always see that the upper echelon, the owners, like, like the, the suite, right, the people right above me on the ladder, weren't paying taxes, were doing something. They had some kind of secret sauce. They never shared that secret sauce with me. Um, they were very happy with the money I was making. They gave me great bonuses. I mean, I can't complain. But I never was taught this education until I came to Lifestyles, and I'm like, how do you really not pay taxes? How, how, do you, how does this stuff really work? How does bonus depreciation, all this stuff. You never get taught. Lifestyles teaches you. Yeah, cost segregation 179 rule. I know you don't know that's gobbledygook right now. Here, I'll explain in simple English you can all understand. The other year, uh, me and my wife Karen made $2 million in one year. Who'd like to do that? Guess how much tax they paid that year? Zero. No, I got back 28000 God bless the IRS. Who's with me? And I, and I will teach you how we do that this year. I mean this weekend. Kind of cool. It's very cool. It is cool. Um, it's, it's still hard to believe. This year was the first year where I really like had all of that come together, um, where we got a giant tax refund, actually. Um, you it, got money back this year instead of having to pay money in like you used to do. Yes. Yeah. yes. Who would like that, getting money back? I mean, you, those are you one percenters in the room that, you know, the petroleum engineer, stuff like that, where you have big six-figure incomes, actually getting money back instead of paying. You got to pay your fair share. Each corner knew his means, each corner knew his own. So the old Carl Abraham Marks. Lincoln... Uh, thing about you can't please all the people all the time, I actually had two investors who complained about, now I'm going to have to pay capital gains taxes. And I went, I made you 145% money and you're complaining about that. So, okay, whatever. Um, but the reality is if they do the other things they need to do, reinvest it and do some other stuff, they won't pay taxes on that. But so. Exactly. So, so what you're going to learn this weekend is we have one deal here making 145% return, right? But with these other ones with bonus cost segregation, depreciation, it will counteract the gains so you pay no taxes. Who likes that? That's what I'm gonna teach this weekend. That's a little more advanced. Well, these are just some quick before and after pictures. Um, one thing I love about what we've done is a lot of 
syndicators will say, we're going to go in and do granite countertops and like spend eleven, twelve thousand dollars um, a unit on upgrading the property. What we've done is every property we've bought, they say the rent on that apartment that they were selling with all of that was twelve hundred dollars a month. We buy the property, we quit doing the granite countertops. Um, we don't do the upgrade to that level. We start at twelve hundred dollars, and then we raise the rents fourteen to eighteen to twenty-two percent a year off of that. The point being that. Whereas other people are spending massive amounts of capital upgrading the apartment, we do a really nice upgrade, but not to that level. We probably spend about half of that amount. So then when we go to sell it, we've already increased the, the income 20, 30, 40% over where we bought it. And on top of that, we tell the buyer, look at the poor job we've done. Look yeah. how much skin is still left on this cat because you can do granite countertops. You can do all of these wonderful upgrades. You can spend the money. So we've had the best of both worlds. That's good. Who thinks he's a smart businessman? Give him a hand. It's huge. Yeah. One cool thing with lifestyles is I think now even my wife would agree with that. <laughs> There's been a couple of times where I say, honey, what do you think about this is uh, we're having to put up $500,000, say, on earnest money, non-refundable earnest yep. money to get this deal. And she goes, I don't know. Do what you think. I'm like, really? <laughs> yeah, my wife stopped staying that one. <laughs> Uh, so this is pretty much what we already talked about, but just to give you a quick idea about how the values of the property went up, bought it for 27. By the time we sold it in three years, we sold it for 46 million too. And we weren't really interested in selling this one, but somebody came to us and said, look, we'll pay you, I think it was 42 million. I said, I wouldn't even want to talk to you until uh, we were talking at least 46. And he came back and said, well, what if I did 46 too? And I went, well, I think that's a good deal. Yeah. So I put it out to my investors and said, this is where we're at. Um, this is what somebody offered. Kind of a crazy pricing. Um, are y'all interested? And everybody, of course, Yeah, now interested. Robert's projection might have said, hey, this is a seven-year-old, guys. Just so you know, you're along for the ride. But he took a vote to his investors, see you have voting rights. He says, who'd be okay with 145% return? How many years in is this one? Three. Three years in. Who'd be okay with that? So is it okay to shorten your period? I'd rather take 145% in three years than waiting seven years. You understand that? So sometimes these guys, they make projections. They're very conservative. Who likes the word conservative? And fiscally, I'm talking about, right? Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. We we'll would, let you get away with that. We'd rather underpromise and overdeliver. Exactly. The joke I always say is I'm only, my reputation is only as good as my last deal. So my investors will be like, Robert was the best thing since sliced peanut butter, sliced peanut butter, sliced bread. <laughs> um, I, I'm not an Aggie. I don't know what sliced peanut butter is. <laughs> John can explain that one later. Um, that was a thimble. That was a thimble. Fingal Samley. <laughs> Fingal Patty, you remember that one. Um, so how did we increase it? Oh, I already mentioned we really increased rental rates. Um, that's one thing I've always prided myself on my entire career is that we don't, honestly, we don't do market surveys. We just believe in, we do it by supply and demand. If we are out of two bedrooms, we're going to pop the rents 150 bucks. And some people will come in and go, but your one bedrooms are now um, more expensive than your two bedrooms. Yes, they are. At an equilibrium, it just keeps working its way out because we'll just keep pushing rents, pushing rents, pushing rents. And I actually had a property in Albuquerque where they built a brand new property. We had a 30-year-old property. My rents were higher. The EVP came in from um, Dallas and came to my property and said, why are you getting these kind of rental rates? And I went, because I can. He started cussing me out. Because I'm like, I think you need to be talking to your regional manager of yeah. your property, not me. So anyway, I always just believe in pushing the rents. Um, but best product at the best price. And that may sound crazy when you're talking about the highest price, but people want a good place to live and they want to be taken care of. And they want to know that their stuff is being, service requests and all of that are being taken care of. So did you notice whether it was single family or multifamily, we take ugly properties and make them beautiful? That is our model. Best product, best price, best people. You will attract the best people. We service best people. We have the best employees. We believe the whole property has to look beautiful. Does that make sense logically? This way you can feel good about what you're investing in, plus make a good rate of return. There's greedy people that won't take care of people. No, this is a service industry. We take care of our residents. We treat them like gold. You have to understand that's a lifestyle's model. Yeah, our philosophy for our management company is if we take care of our customers and we take care of our employees, the numbers tend to take care of themselves. Yep. Uh, the company that I worked for before, for 14 years, we were rated number one in the nation for customer service out of the whole nation for four years in a row. So I'm a freak about customer service. It's like take care of your customer, take care of your employee. Then you don't have as much employee turnover. You don't have as much resident turnover. Your NOI goes up even while you're pushing rents. So, 
Um, how did lifestyles change? <laughs> it changed everything. Um, time. He keeps talking about time. I mean, I was the guy that was in rush hour traffic every single day, driving 30, 40 minutes on a good day um, to the office, in my office. Great corner office, great view. Thought, man, I've made it. But I, I did not control my time. If I actually one morning heard there was a wreck and I was like, well, I'm going to wait 30 or 40 minutes until after rush hour traffic, let the traffic clear out, I felt guilty because I wasn't in the office. So I was the perfect employee in that sense. Um, financial freedom, I'm not worried about running out of money. I'm not worried about um, I need to die sooner rather than later so I'll have money. Um, I'm not worried about if I die, will, will, will my wife be okay or vice versa. I can't tell you what that kind of financial freedom <clears throat> means. I mean, it's just so liberating. Having control of your time is so liberating. It's just, it's, it's amazing. So we are really excited because this, we bought 17 acres that right outside of Waxahachie, nice house on a creek, wooded lot. My office now, as I look out on the creek, I look out, I get out on my big old giant riding lawnmower when I want to, I work when I want to work, um, and I play when I want to play. So we couldn't have done that. We couldn't have afforded that. We have a lifestyle now that we never dreamed of. We just love it. Awesome. So, so really quick before we get to this next part, I, I think it's important. There's some new folks here for the first time. What advice would you give the new folks? It could be get, anything. Get off the bench. <laughs> uh, get started. You know, I told you earlier, it took me probably 10 years of uh, John trying to get me to join and, and do something. Um, the model with lifestyles works. So be it $25,000, be it whatever you have to invest, start. The one thing I say all the time, one thing we hear all the time, is I should have done this a year ago. I should have done this five years ago. So, How, how many folks in the room, because a lot of you have already been members, how many of you wish you did five years before you actually joined? So you see that, all the new folks, all of them did that. So, you know, it's, it's, it's when's the best time to do this? Right now, there is no time in the market. Well, I'm going to wait till the new elections. Guys, I told you, it doesn't matter Trump, Biden, Kamala Harris, whoever you believe. It doesn't matter. The, the politics doesn't matter. You can't time the market. The best time to buy is right now. If you don't start and you keep pushing it off and you wait for timing, there is no timing. I, I always make my own economy. That's why I can hear 20 financial planners. I can hear 40 different people writing articles for Fortune magazine go, none of them own apartments. They don't do what we do. Or even if they own apartments, it's class A, beautiful stuff that we don't own. We have class C and B, working class. People always need a place to live. We make our own economy. It's huge. Absolutely. Yeah. So for me, what's next? Um, you know, not to get all too personal or, or boo hoo but it's the first and foremost is to get my wife through her cancer journey that she's on right now. I, with my career before, having to be at that job eight to five, five days a week, would not have been available time-wise, would not have been able to have the flexibility to do the stuff I do uh, and try to take care of her. So that alone, I mean, just makes me want to cry right now, seriously, because that lifestyle has given me that. I could not have had that on my own. That is just huge to me. Isn't that powerful, working your own schedule? No boss to tell you what to do. Family's important to us, so it's great that you can do it on you. one boss. You talk about it. <laughs> he still has one boss? Yes, he does. Yes, I do. Um, so... Another short-term goal, and I feel like I've started down the journey, the David Fisher journey of helping others, is with those three people I helped re uh, retire from W2 America. That is like, so rewarding, that feeling of like, I can't believe I had a part in helping somebody else do that. I want to do that more. It's like, it's like a drug. Now I want to like, do it a lot more to help other people retire and get their lives time back. You know, I told, I, I told a, a member, a newer member that just came in earlier, I said, you know, our job is to ruin people's careers. And then they all end up in rehab. So it's kind of cool. But re really quick, Robert, you know, if anybody in the room has invested in any of Robert's deals, could you raise your hands? So you see all those folks? Yikes. That's his legacy right there. You know, all these people that are raising their hands, they're in, I don't he had done several deals, but give them a hand for stepping up too. And to my investors, I want to say thank you because this was our third deal. Um, we hadn't really proven ourselves yet, so some people didn't know Robert Tinning at that point, and they invested anyway uh, because they believe in lifestyles and they trusted. But thank you all for um, trusting me to be the steward of the finances. So that's 
been an honor to be to be able to do that. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. So long-term goals is I, I want to really get back to traveling the world again with my wife. This whole darn COVID thing and then her cancer journey, it's been like, it feels like a two and a half year time warp. You know, it's just like time was locked out for us. So we just went two weeks ago um, to Cabo for our annual, what used to be our annual trip to Cabo. And it was so amazing. It's like the world is back. Um, couldn't even come to this, these meetings for two years because her doctor didn't want me to expose her to COVID. Right. So it's great to be back and see people again and be back in the Lifestyles mm -hmm. family. Um, and the last thing is I, want, I said I want to become a John Pry. <laughs> and what that means is the passive income part, not the Aggie part. <laughs> so, so if you want to understand what that means if inside baseball is, He's a lead investor. This is a full-time job. He's a steward of these people's money. He's working, you know, running these properties and all that. John is a lazy Aggie that just sits there and makes checks in the mail, just so you know. He's in like 20 or 30 deals. So I just want you to understand. And, and you know what? It's funny, Robert. I had the same goal as you. It's, it's traveling the world with my wife. My wife already did that without me. <laughs> it's true. She travels the world without me. She goes, you can come eventually. So cool. That's it. So you want to take some questions? Sure. All right. So, folks, do you have any questions for him? Or online? Do you have online ones? Okay, we'll do online first. So we've got one question from Diane, um, and she's asking, when did you change from third-party property management to self-management, and what did that? What steps did you take doing that? So that was day zero, yeah. um, because for me, uh, having been in property management my entire career, one, I didn't. I, I know enough to be dangerous. One, I would have driven a fee manager crazy because I would have been constantly asking questions. Yeah. Why are you doing this? Why is yeah. that? Why did you not do your write-offs or whatever? And two, frankly, I didn't trust anybody else. It's like, I know enough. I'm going to be involved enough in it, so much in it anyway. I might as well just do it myself. So to answer the question, I mean, I started immediately doing, um, I jumped into lifestyles, went straight to being a lead, first of all, and then went straight to being self-managed. And guys, if you're new, if you want to understand the logic of that, no one will care more about your money than you. Who agrees with that? So we believe in self-managing as quickly as we can. We love that over third-party management. Sometimes you have to. If you're brand new, they might make you do it, but we want to self-manage if we can. So, great question. Okay, anybody in the room? There you go. So can you repeat that question for the people online? Um, you're basically asking, I think, that with the I'll economy where it is that. now, all right, am I going to keep being well, pushing the rents the way I've been pushing them? Yeah. And there. the short answer would be yes, because the easiest way to explain the way we do it is that if we push the rents on our one bedrooms until we suddenly, instead of being 100% in one bedroom, occupied in one bedrooms, we're suddenly 92%. We're like, okay, we've kind of pushed them. We've hit a ceiling for the moment. And at that point, people start renting another floor plan because it makes more economics. So we're looking at the sub-economics of our property versus the market. Our customers telling us what they'll pay for by supply and demand. So we're pushing it based on supply and demand. But even with the economy, as David said, people need housing. Dallas-Fort Worth is still one of the hottest markets, if not the hottest market in all of uh, the nation. People are coming here. There's a shortage of housing. Um, so yeah, we're, we're still pushing rents. The property we closed on in September, I want to say we've already raised the rents, the income, not the rents. We've raised income 19% since September. Yeah, do you guys see the economy around here in Dallas, what's happening? You have insurance companies coming in here. You have, you know, car manufacturers coming in here. You have so many different jobs coming in here. Is that a good thing? There's not an inf enough infrastructure, so there's a shortage of housing. So that's why anybody in the industry up in Sherman, what are they building? A text instruments plant. So there's... There's all these positives coming for us in this area, which is great. Hold on, hold on. It's the online. We'll do this one last um, one. This might be for either of you, but what are the cap rates looking uh, like right now? I hear that they're on the rise and uh, we're potentially looking at selling one of our multifamily properties. Yeah, we just had a meeting before this where people were saying, yes, cap rates are actually going up. But what is it? Supply and demand, the same thing. 
If your property is profitable, it's making good money, sell. You know, I'm selling a whole bunch of properties right now, myself. Guess what I'm also doing? Buying a bunch of properties. So I make my own economy. I buy at this price, I sell at that price, I buy more. Because guess what happens? Debt equity won't make you rich. Opportunity cost. If you have this many millions stuck there in equity right now, you need to redeploy that in a new property so you can make more money. So there's nothing wrong with selling and buying again. I don't care about cap rates. I make my own economy. People always use that stuff and try to talk up here. Dude, you get whatever you want for your property. If they're not willing to pay it, a perfect example is right here. Uh, I'll offer you 40 million. Nope, 46. Take it or leave it, I don't care. It's a stupid price. If you're an idiot to buy it at that price, I will sell it. Instead of my 10 year plan, I'll do a three year plan. Am I right? Okay. So you see how he made his own economy? You just gotta be stubborn. There is always an idiot willing to overpay for a perfectly run property. <laughs> And then we'll buy it off them five years later when they run in the ground. That's, that's our model. You just nailed it. That's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's give Robert a hand. Thank you so much for sharing.